This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar with an effects overview for Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll show you different ways to create green screen keys, which are also called chroma keys, using both good and <laughs> awful footage in Adobe Premiere Pro. A chroma key selects a specific color in an image, often green, but it can be any color, and makes it transparent. This is most often used to place an actor or other foreground object into a different background. For this technique to work, the green background color and lighting needs to be as smooth as possible. The goal is a flat, even, well-saturated background color that displays 40 to 50% grayscale values on the waveform monitor. Let me show you how to create a key using optimal images, then we'll create a key using miserable images. I'll show you some key settings to adjust, how to create a mask to remove garbage, and for an in-depth look at green screen keys, take a look at webinar 240, Green Screen Keys in Premiere Pro. Let me show you how Chroma Key works. This is about an, as optimal a key as you're going to find. Let's take a look at the waveform monitor. Look at that green background. It is perfectly flat lit right at 40% grayscale, and look at the saturation. When a green screen key is working, it's looking for a specific amount of color. If there's no color there, it has, it's why it's called a chroma key. It's keying on color. Every one of those green pixels is essentially the same color, the same brightness. To do a key, select the clip, and we're going to search for a key called Ultra, Ultra, you got to, no, Larry, doesn't work. You got to be in the effects panel. There we go. Then search for ultra. And there's called, it's in the keying folder. It's called ultra key. Just drag it on top of the foreground clip. Remember foreground, that's the clip that has the green screen is on top. The background is in the bottom. Select it. And now we'll go back to editing because I don't need to see the scopes anymore. And we're going to scroll down inside Effect Controls, and there's Ultra Key. And like every other effect, by default, it's turned off. First thing I need to do is to tell it what color to get rid of. Click the eyedropper and click near the face. Not so close that you get hair or skin, but near the face, because if the face looks good, everybody believes the key. And if the face doesn't look good, then anything else you do is not going to make any difference. Now, quickly, we have a really nice looking key, except I've got some green halo in here. The green is leaking through to our hair. We're going to do a spill suppression. And inside spill suppression, because that's what that green is called. It's called a spill. We're going to twirl range down and just increase the range a bit. Now, if I get carried away, she goes magenta. This would be considered bad form. So I'm going to pull it back. If I go the other way, notice how now she really has a green halo. So I'm going to pull it forward until the green halo disappears, but before any magenta comes in, right around 58%. And now we've got a really nice key with no halo. That ultra key is, does a really nice job for keys which are well lit, which this is. Now, again, I'd like to get some depth of field here. We'll go to Yara. We'll go to Effects. We'll go to Blur. And we'll go down to Gaussian Blur. Drag it on the background. With the background selected, I'm going to go down add about 25. OK, now look at that. We've added the depth of field to make it look like she is in front of the city. As long as we're here, we'll just do one more thing. We'll just change the position, pull her over just a bit. Great. That is about as perfect a source footage as you can get, which means I never work them in real life. Instead, this is what I have to deal with. Oh my goodness, look at this. I've got light stands in the shot. I've got every color of green except actual green. Look at this, there is no saturation. The, the green is everywhere from 38% down to oh, folds in the fabric, bad framing. <laughs> uh, way too often this happens. So how do we fix it? 
Well, again, we're going to go back to look for the Ultra Key. We're going to grab Ultra Key. But this time we're going to use more tools. First to Effect Controls, click the eyedropper tool. I'm not going to click the purest screen. I'm not going to click the darkest screen. I'm going to click something which is kind of in the between, which is right there. And we're started. But what's wrong with it? The way we find out what's wrong is we go to Output and change it to Alpha Channel. That which is opaque is solid white. That which is transparent is solid black. And that which is translucent, which is both green and not green, is gray. And notice virtually everything in this shot is gray. I've got to get a clear black border around Andrew for me to be able to get the key to work. So first thing I'm going to do is go to Matte Generation. And the first setting I'm going to adjust is Pedestal. I'm going to grab Pedestal and drag it until I get as much black as I can. Then I'm going to get Shadow. I work from the bottom up and say, how do I make this as black as possible? Remember, black is transparent. White is opaque. And what I've just done now is I've isolated Andrew at least a little bit to be able to extract him from the background. I don't need to have the whole frame because I'm now going to go in Ultra Key. And remember, we've got these masks again. I'm going to take the pen tool and click here with the pen tool. And click here, and here, and here, and here, and all the way down, and reconnect. Oh, look at that. I've isolated Andrew, but, oh my goodness, only Andrew is keyed. This is the difference I was talking about earlier. When you apply a mask in the effect, like I did here, it limits where that mask is going to be applied. I don't want to limit where the mask is applied. I want to make the rest of the clip invisible. So I got to get rid of this mask. Highlight the mask here and hit the delete key. Now the mask is gone. Let's go up to opacity. And now we'll click the opacity and create a mask here, here. Because I've got that black border, as long as I've got black between Andrew and the background, Notice what I've just done. I've cut Andrew out. The rest of the chroma key clip is now transparent, so all that garbage disappeared. And now let's find Andrew. Go back to Andrew by switching from alpha, which shows me transparency. Remember, white is opaque, to composite. And there's Andrew. As long as we're here, let's go and apply a blur. And blur this back a bit and we'll set this to about 20. I want to make the background a little bit darker. Not too much, 60. And then as long as I can, I'm going to go back to Andrew, pull him over and make him a little bit larger and pull him down right about there. Ta-da! Theoretically, because it's an outdoor shot, I should have him standing up so his posture's not perfect. But you get the idea. Even when I was given garbage, we can use the tools that we have inside the Ultra Key and the Opacity Mask, which we've seen earlier today, and changing size and position using the motion settings to be able to create the key that we need, even when our source footage was not that Good. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar with an overview of all the different effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 303. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library can save you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours, on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. 
and thanks.